Well, let's talk about it, man. Y'all wanted to get into it since you heard my video. Uh, let's do it. It's the truth behind the Karate Kid series. You basically heard me break down the Karate Kid, and it shocked a lot of people. They was, what? <laughs> I never looked at Karate Kid like that. You got to break down this series. Now everybody interested, because they heard something about the Karate Kid they had never heard before in their life. <laughs> the Karate Kid was a whole different movie where people didn't know who the good guy or the bad guy was. And I had to tell you the truth. Now the movie starts where a mother and son is moving from New Jersey all the way to Reseda, California. Because her, she got a new job and she wanted to get her her, her uh, big mouth son out of Jersey because guys are probably going to take his head off. Because he runs his mouth all the time. And that seemed to be a, a trend that follows him everywhere he goes. Probably why the dad left. Couldn't stand his mouth. So he's 15, thinks he knows it all, learned karate from a book. And... You know, running his mouth. So the guys in Reseda tried to help him out. Say, you know what? Let's go out. You know, go to the beach. Couple of guys we know out there. He, you know, where he lives. You know, they trying to welcome him in the neighborhood. He's running his mouth about what he used to do in Jersey. How he's this karate guy. You know, he this and that. Then they take him to a beach party where some of them are hanging out, chilling, you know, playing some soccer, something he was good at. They on the beach listening to tunes. Then here comes Johnny pulling up, and he eyeing Johnny's girl. He don't know it's Johnny's girl at the time. But Johnny and his girl are having a conversation, you know, and like, hey, you know, what's this, you know, Getting all into the thing and whatever. And he throws the radio down. He picks the radio up. And takes it from him. He decides to interrupt, to interject himself in a conversation. Now, first off, this man and his girl is having a conversation. This ain't got nothing to do with you. It's they be. This is her man. This is they thing. You stay up out of it. No, he wanted to get a part of it. No, yeah. Do you want the radio? Here. Pushed him down. And then next thing you know, he wants to get up and be tough. So he gets up. Johnny gives him a kick and said, hey, you had enough, hero? What's, what'd he do? He punches Johnny in the face. Now his homeboy's like, okay, it's on. All right, there it is. It's on. So they're like, all right, here we go. So Johnny, all right, no mercy. And <laughs> then laid him out. Next thing you know, they're like, man, this your man? <laughs> this your homeboy? And they all left him. They left him. They knew, like, man, you brought us around this sucker. Bring this sucker to Reseda. So anyway, he over there. Miyagi's checking him out. He ain't seeing nothing to him, to really, you know. Now, every time they see him, it's like, oh, that's that dude. <laughs> so now he's getting bullied because he didn't start this situation. He didn't got himself into something. And then he keep trying to mess around with Johnny's girl. You know, I mean, you just got in town. The last thing you want to do is start messing with people in town. You don't even know where to go yet. So then he was like, you know, I'm going to take up some karate. Then he see Johnny and them up in there. And the place he wanted to go to. Now he break out. Like, oh, you want to be Cobra Kai now, huh? <laughs> So anyway, he breaks out. He they knock him down the thing. He start telling his mom he needs to know karate and Miyagi listening. Like he trimming a tree and all this crap. Next thing you know, everything's gone. 
Like, they through messing with them, no problems, no nothing. Halloween come around, he's still messing with Johnny Girl. So now he's feeling real good. He hanging out with, with her, and he got this shower thing on, so don't nobody know it's him. And he hanging in there, and he decides to do what? Screw around with him. Johnny trying to roll up some, some weed, you know, get high with the guys and kicking in. They ain't bothering him. They leaving him alone. But what does this big mouth troublemaker do? He goes all the way ahead and does what? Put a water hose over the bathroom where he rolling up some dro and ruin his weed. Get all the weed wet and everything, get him wet. Then y'all try to run away. So now, and when he called him, they went, of course they called him. He all out of shape with this big shower thing. And my things are coming around. No, no, no. The only thing coming around is you finna get pounded. So he tried to get over the fence, couldn't. They got him, pulled him back down. <laughs> And they told him, you just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? See? That's what it was right there. You couldn't leave well enough alone. And that is his thing right there. He can't leave well enough alone. So they was working him out. He was getting the whole smith. Johnny was giving it to him. Couldn't even stand no more. So... He was going to get out of commission, and Miyagi came and broke it up. Miyagi saw this was his opportunity right here. So he saved the kid, and he said, you know what? I'll take you up there, and I'll talk to the, to the sensei. So he'll make sure that these guys don't hurt you. You know, like, I'll talk to the karate sensei. Once he walks in the dojo, he start looking around. He see the military stuff with Crease. Oh, it was on. It was on. And he saw the way Crease was. Enemy deserves no mercy. He saw that organization, the military style, and that just did it. He was had enough. Your students jumped him. <laughs> and Sensei John Crease stole the show. I heard you jumped a couple of my students last night. <laughs> that already sent him off. That already turned him. That already turned him off. When he said you jumped a couple of my students last night. <laughs> I heard you jumped a couple of my students last night. <laughs> Must got facts wrong. <laughs> Here to ask, leave boy alone. Why, he can't handle his own beat? <laughs> so now Miyagi want to challenge him, and he the one entered Daniel in this tournament. Daniel like, wait a minute, we came out here to get this to stop. You, you done threw me in a doggone karate tournament. You a pushy little bastard, ain't you? <laughs> but I like that. But I like that. Show you who we going to accommodate. He's like, what, you don't like the odds? <laughs> You feel like matching, Mr. Lawrence? Yes, sense. <laughs> it's the odds. That's what's bothering you? Oh, man. It's, since St. John Crease is that entire movie. It don't move without Crease. So, right away, Miyagi sees Sensei St. John's Crease organization, military style. Then he starts getting flashbacks. Then you later find out Mr. Miyagi was married, he was in the war, he's in the 442nd, he was a war hero, and while he was in the war, his wife who was expecting, she died, giving birth to their kid, so she had complications during childbirth, so the kid's gone, she's gone, and he's at war. So... Very, very sad story, which made Miyagi hate the war. 
because he felt like he was on the wrong side of it. Fought World War II in France, got all the awards and medals and stuff. So, felt like he was on the wrong side of the military. Didn't, didn't really care for it too much. He, it scarred him. So now here's Crease, American soldier. Now he can get evil. Now he get to defeat this American soldier who made him lose his family, sending him off to war while his wife died to give him birth and complications. So he's taking it all out on Sensei John's Creek Stoop. So he's going to take an American kid, train him, teach him how to fight, get him to clean his house. And Miyagi, he's like, man, this dude's just making me his slave. Then he's getting muscle memory and showing him how to do that. And he's like, good, now go sweep my floor. <laughs> I ain't got to do none of this. Then when you get through sweeping the floors, I want you to come all the way back. Then I want you to get get the work down there on some rest of the stuff I got out there. So naturally, they all like, what? Miyagi, he think he learning karate because he getting strong by just cleaning stuff. So now he think, oh man, I'm learning karate. Just a good kind to keep him clean in the house. <laughs> washing cars. Now, here's the thing. They get there. Daniel is not even registered as a black belt at all. He don't have no belt. So, Miyagi, they ain't even supposed to be in no tournament. Period. Not one. But what does he do? What does he do? He steals a belt, passes it to Danny's new girlfriend, who was Johnny's girl, and then stole Johnny's girl, passes her belt so they can sneak this guy into the tournament. Danny ain't even supposed to be in the tournament. But okay, he's beating some of the novice fighters in there, and he's doing good with Johnny. Then he gets his leg hurt. Leg was already hurt going into this thing. So everybody gets to the sweep the leg part. He told him to sweep the leg. The sweep the leg technique worked. He swept the leg and came up with a scoring kick. That ain't what did Daniel in. What did Daniel in is when Johnny out, out of his own his own doing took the leg out. He elbowed him to the knee. That's never what John Kreese told him to do. Kreese told him, sweep the leg, which he did. It was a weakness. He was sweeping the leg. John, he had to pay attention to that because his leg was injured. Now, the bad part about that it's when he told him, he's like, and the, the one student says, Sensei, I can beat this guy. I don't want him beat. <laughs> I want him out of commission. <laughs> and he told the other guy, no mercy. And had him strike him below the had him strike him below. That kick to the leg is what got him hurt. So, if you wanted to break down that way, I would say that was probably a bad move. But I see what he wanted to do. He wanted to end this because he saw what Miyagi's whole plan was. The crease knew, like, hey, this guy's, you know, he now he wish he was on the Japanese side. He over here trying to, yeah, he trying to go to war with me. And he was like, we ain't going to let that go down. He the enemy. Now we got to let him know what war really is. You know, take the leg out. You ain't finna use this turn no, another American against us. And he gonna be your secret weapon because you, your kid and wife is gone. Okay. Now he gonna be your kid and you gonna send him your weapon at us. Okay. 
Let's go. Take him out. Then he went with some fluky illegal kick. The music come on. Johnny gives him the trophy. He runs over there talking about how great he's all right because he failed. Now, when the thing's over, Chris tells him right away, look, man, he's like, I got second place. I did my best. He's like, man, what are you talking about? Second place is no place. You either first or you nothing. <coughs> and basically, when that happened, told him, hey, you either first place or you're nothing. He's man winning. He broke the trophy in pieces. What do you think about second place now? <laughs> hey, man, you really crazy. And he told him. What did he tell him? He was like, yo. He said something like, uh, uh, like, you really sick. And, he had, and Kreese had to put him in a choke. Once Kreese got him in a choke, here come Mr. Miyagi and Danny. They already won. Go home. Mind your own business. He going to go over there and tell him to release Johnny. He disciplined his student. His student got out of hand. He had to put him in a choke to let him know, I still run this show. I'm Sensei John Kreese. <laughs> and this is the disciplinary factor here. But no. What do he do? What does he do? He interferes, grab Crease by the wrist, assault him while he's disciplining his kids. Then he grabs him and want to make Crease out there trying to fight him. He moving out the way. Crease trying to hit him. He punching out windows. And end up cutting his hands, and now he want to try to move in and embarrass Crease when he got both his hands cut. And threatening to hit Crease and all this stuff. Crease's hands are cut now. He probably got to get stitches. Blood coming out of his hands. He just split both his knuckles open. All this to humiliate him in front of his students so he could lose all his students. That's what Miyagi's plan was the whole time. Then, next thing you know, he's supposed to go to college and start going to school after he graduate. He then tore up the car. Mr. Miyagi got him. The girl don't like him no more. She's going with a football player because he gets, she realized, man, you ain't nothing but a big mouth. I don't really need to be around you. Miyagi, like, look, I'm going to go to Japan for a minute. You know, I'm up. You can take the crib and do whatever. Instead of saying, bet, I'm going to have the whole crib to myself. You got a nice spot. Miyagi gone. You kicking it there with him. Next thing you know, he come over there with a book and want to go to Japan with him. I want to go to Japan with you, Miyagi. I ain't never been to Japan, Miyagi. I already bought a book. Come on, man. What about college? Well, college will always be there because we all just want to be with you. So next thing you know, they missing me, Aggie. Knowing that, knowing that Daniel wants to go, and it was all his scheme anyway. He wanted Daniel to go. He wanted to go bragging and, and show, look, look what I got. Then he come down there. He come to find out he was a dirty coward. Down there messing with his best friend's woman. And then he left because his best friend found out I was going to kill him. So he broke up out of town. Now that Pops is sick and getting ready to die, he thought, okay, well, this will blow over. It's been about 30, 40 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> he waiting on me. I get him at the airport. Be doggy. <laughs> he, got, he waiting for him. Sado waiting for him at the airport. Eh? They know about Daniel. They know about the whole thing. They can't wait to see Miyagi come home. They come to find out Miyagi's father trained him and his buddy. They like, that's his sensei too. Him and Sato and Chosen is his student. So now Miyagi, now Miyagi knew what he was doing. He wanted Daniel to come. 
because he know Chosen was going to be there. He like, look, I'm going to have my soldier. You got yours. Now, he, he didn't even tell Daniel the whole thing. Like, look, Daniel walking into a hot zone. But I tell you, that Miyagi is low down and dirty. So now he got me, he got Daniel out here and Chosen meets him. He's about to break his hand just meeting him. So you and Miyagi son student? <laughs> so <laughs> right away, <laughs> right away, there's problems, there's conflict. So in the town, they sitting there, the uncle try to come out and fight him, Miyagi. I'm here for father. Miyagi a farmer, not a fighter. Ugh, smell of coward. <laughs> So that's all that's all this movie was. Miyagi trying to get out of fighting Sato after he didn't wormed him out of his girl. Then he come back and fall in love with the same girl. She like Miyagi now. Like, look, I traded up. Pops die, do the funeral thing. Then Chosen and Daniel meet each other again. And he's like, whatever happened between my uncle and, and them, that's they thing. You know, we don't got to have some, but nope, you go out there. He out there selling fruit and all this. Your thing was to buy the fruit and leave. You don't go over there and take the weight and break it. Oh, you cheat. You rob us. You cheat. You steal. So now his honor is messed up as he had the weight out there. He's like, if something's wrong with this weight. Then it breaks in half. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we'll talk. Maybe we have lunch sometime. There you go with that big old mouth. The Chosen got drunk, caught him late at night, <laughs> had to give him one to the chef. <laughs> you insult my honor again, <laughs> and I kill you. <laughs> he, had, he had to know this ain't no tournament. <laughs> you, in a, you in another country. They going to leave you for that big mouth of yours. Right away, running off at that mouth. So naturally, this guy came, he goes all the way to another country and got another person ready to kill him. He ain't been there two days. And now this guy wanna kill him. Like he said, no, we got our own beef. <laughs> and sure enough, what happened? He go to break the ice, people trying to break the ice. He got some American soldiers out there. They trying to break all the ice, and what he doing? Running off at the mouth again. See, they're doing it all. They're using their arm. They got to use this, their brain. And you think you could do better, Big Mouth? <laughs> right away, the, the army guy, he only knew him for five seconds, and already knew this guy was a Big Mouth. So right away, Daniel then got himself in a situation and Mr. Miyagi had to come bail him out, have him do this breathing technique. When he didn't smack all the ice out, and they won all this money off of Sato and Chosen. And now Sato's take because you didn't embarrass him. We do not out of bet with cowards. Do not embarrass me again. So. All of a sudden, they do all these t tactics to try to get him to fight. He gave him three days tomorrow, so Miyagi's like, look, I gotta get out of town again. I'm finna run. This dude finna come down here and do all these things to the town. So, Chemico mad because the little Japanese girl, she didn't fell in love with Daniel. So Daniel thought, she didn't love no Daniel. She wanted to go dance. She wanted to go, to, you know, out to the world for her dance. But out there, you know, they don't have no real money in school out there. But if she may get with an American man, American man could get her out so she could be on TV. That's what she wanted. So she was liking Daniel because, hey, this American man can get me on TV. 
There's no schools for this type of dance here. That's what she was working him. See, this whole movie, man, I swear, y'all don't know nothing about this saga. I have to tell you and fill you in. Kimiko was running game on that. The whole time, all she was doing was working him because she wanted to get on TV and be famous. She knew, hey, this is a white guy from America. I can get with him, get me a visa. I'm over in the country. I can get on TV. That's what she was thinking about. She was like, you can't get me to America. He can't. So he was getting ready to go. She wanted to put him the sad trip, put on the little thing, give him a kiss, do everything she can. They had got married on the phone. As soon as he got home, he'd have married her and got over in the country and wouldn't have seen her since. As soon as she got her citizenship. Boy, I tell you, this film here is incredible. All the stuff that's been going on in this movie. So now Sato comes up with a plan. <laughs> he got the deed to the village and he gonna tear the whole village down until Miyagi fights. So Miyagi agreed. They finna fight to the death. You win. I fight you. So he put the house, all that go to Daniel if he lose. I don't want the house. I want you. Let's leave. I'm sick of this all the garbage. This is not about Anagabe. <laughs> no matter what happened, D to the village goes to the village. Village safe forever. So, Miyagi already went. So there's a big storm. And now that the big storm happened and this big piece of wood falls down on Sato while he was training, and doing his meditation, he comes right out. So, this is the only way you can win. So Miyagi breaks this piece of wood that's laying on his chest, one little tap, and pulls it off of him, and helps Sato up. Come on, old friend, I got you. Miyagi picks him up, takes him to safety, and all of a sudden, now they buddy. I was wrong. Hate is wrong. Go help him. Is Daniel out there and Chosen's like, I can't help. I, I, I can't help that guy. I'm sorry. His mouth is too much. I just can't go help that dude. And I understood how Chosen felt. He's like, look, this guy's disrespected me. He, he came into this country. He acting like he owned the place. I, I can't do nothing else with him. I already kicked his butt early at the disco. I, I got drunk. He got my girl out there. So, and then I lost my money. <laughs> I had to go to his crib, kick his butt, and everything else. So, knowing this guy can't beat me in karate at all. Now, you want me to go help him? I just can't do that. So Sato breaks his pupil's heart. Now, you are dead to me. And Chosen runs out of the storm. Blames Daniel for his disgrace. As the whole town looks at him in disgrace. So now he disappears. Now they open the uh, place for dance, the hall, and all that. So now it will be dance there forever. Now he has got a whole new walk of life since Miyagi broke that wood and saved him. Well, no, what happened was he saw him, <laughs> they had that piece of wood at his house. And that him and me with Miyagi found his kids on a beach, and he still he barely put a dent in that dog on wood. Ha! Ha! Every day working on that piece of wood, and Miyagi just broke one the same size that was laying on his chest in seconds with one chop. He realized, hey, you know what? That was some old stuff for me. I've been over that, bro. 
I don't know what I was thinking, Miyagi. You know? <laughs> Sato, he, he wasn't right on up after he saw that. Like, this man just broke this thing laying on my chest. <laughs> Barely touching it. I ain't finna fight him. I'm all, what the hell was I thinking? I was out of my damn mind. So anyway, they having this whole festival, and Chosen comes in and grabs Daniel, and now we fight to the death. He got a butterfly knife, punches Kimiko. I'm like, man, this dude that went full Ike Turner, he, he mad. So I'm like, all right. Man, him and Daniel is fighting, and it's like, wait a minute. How the hell was you a karate champion? Daniel, and I mean, he's telling him. This is not tournament. This for real. I'm like, well, why the hell you bring me out here to fight to the death in Japan? That, this was not part of the thing I signed up for, but okay. Barely know her, but all right, I guess. Then everybody brings out a drum and starts making distractions because then you're about to lose. And then I guess the drum give him this inspiration to just keep hitting, punching the guy in his face with two fists. And he couldn't miss his big fat head, so I don't know why he couldn't do that from the jump. And I'm like, dude, you've been in Okinawa your whole life and you don't know the drum technique? What the hell is wrong with you? What kind of champion martial artist and student is you that Sato didn't teach you the damn drum technique? Everybody in Okinawa got a damn drum. <laughs> they knew what time to bring it out. <laughs> oh, uh oh, them drum that got him fired up. Next thing you know, he got chemical. He doing real good. Went in there, worked that out. Next thing you know, he come home. All of a sudden, Kim and Cole ain't coming home with him. And Crease done lost the business. No more students. Bills piling up. He go see his buddy Terry Silver. Terry Silver was like, hey, man. Old war buddy. Crease taught him everything he know about karate. Crease saved his life in now many a time. But Terry Silver's rich. God knows how to dump toxic waste and, <laughs> and pollute waters. Businessman who bought the Cobra Kai gym for John. So he brought him the keys and said, hey, I got no more students. I'll pay you the money when I can get it to you. He's like, you think I bought that gym for money? I bought that gym for you. He was like, nah, you ain't quitting. Know what you're doing? Need? Yeah, you're going to Tahiti. <laughs> That's what you need. Got him cleaned up, put him on vacation. Sent him over to Tahiti. So he can get his mind back right. He was a broken man. So now Miyagi them back. Daniel's supposed to take the money that they won and put it down for school. Once again, Daniel blows off school. Comes up with an idea. You know what I was thinking, Mr. Miyagi? Why well, I get a bonsai shop? So I'm gonna get a bonsai store now. I'm going to go into business with you. Now, going back to Kimiko. How Kimiko was running game on him. Her plan switched once Sato became cool. Now that Sato back cool, he going to open up stuff for them to have to dance there. So she don't need his butt no more. So now that's why he's like, well, she got an offer for a Japanese dance thing. And... No, she don't want to come, and she ain't coming to visit me in America, and she stands. Yeah, she stands. She, ain't, she wasn't never in love with you. <laughs> she wasn't in love with you. She was gaming you. She want to be on TV. 
Don't think about your butt <laughs> at all. And you found that out real fast. So now, let's speed this thing on through. Here it is, Terry Silver taking care of all this, and he told him what all happened. Silver's been to look out for his military buddy. He's like, that's it. <laughs> this is revenge. <laughs> all revenge. Right here, this kid and this Miyagi, I didn't heard enough. So, he goes into town, sets up as a commoner, tells them that John Priest was dead. He's opening up the dojo again. Finna give it a good name and get balance. All the swindle moves. But he needed a bad guy. Somebody, a teenager who was a bad guy in karate who could help pull off his mission. And who else better to get than Mike Barnes? <laughs> Karate's bad boy. <laughs> oh, he's perfect. <laughs> so Barnes knew he would have hard ownership of these dojos if he had completed the mission that was on the paper for him to complete. So, all he had to do was get his hands on the eye. So right away, they get to the uh, part where Daniel... Daniel and Miyagi are both, you know, into this bonsai shop business. They part. They buy this little plot, this store, and they finna set it up and all this stuff. And Chris is out there watching him as, you know, he's going to hang out and meet the new girl next door. She's a pottery class and all this. And, She's his friend and all this stuff. And it's like, all right. She's like, I got a boyfriend back home and we're going to kind of work it out and all this stuff when I get back home. And so they were just friends in this. But she was sticking around. And when you stick around this loud mouth, trouble seems to follow. Now, in this one, it was mostly Miyagi's mess that he's caught up in that really ended up being his downfall. In this one, his loud mouth didn't really get him in trouble. This is the one where he really wasn't that bad. It's like he grew up a little bit. He learned from over there in Japan to keep his big mouth shut. So he really went, didn't have no problems. He was really okay, but hey. But Mike Barnes got money to get. It's revenge time because of what Miyagi didn't did. So once again, Miyagi didn't got Daniel in the sun. So now, you know, he's trying to have a nice time with the girl, teach her a little karate moves. And here comes the, what's his name? Dennis and Snake and Mike Barnes up in there. Mike's like, look, I need you to sign this contract so we can fight. I need your title. It's like, hey, I'm not defending the title, you know. And they sent him an invite in the mail. Daniel wanted to defend it, but Miyagi's like, no, I'm not going to train you for it if you do. And Daniel's like, look, it's only one fight. The defending champion only got to do one fight. And that's the main event. So that's one fight, you know. I would like to defend the title. They were like, no, nah, that's okay. We don't want to do it. And once again, controversy. So as this keeps motoring on, you see, you started to see a pattern. And as you started to see a pattern, there was a thing between Mr. Miyagi and Daniel unless they was focused that he wasn't going to fight. They knew to push the angle to push him to fight, just to keep pounding on him. So Terry Silver was smart enough to know to turn Daniel against Miyake. Saying, I'm going to give you what you want and not what he won't get. 
So right around there, Daniel's doing all these things. Daniel was actually getting better. He was breaking wood, breaking ribs, tough. Ain't taking no crap for nobody in the club, busting noses. <laughs> Something getting in your way, boom, down like lightning. <laughs> You're ready. He shoot. He probably was ready. That Daniel would have had a better chance against Mike Barnes than the one that Miyagi sent in there. So once he decided, yo, that ain't me. I'm going to go and tell Terry, thanks for all the help, but I'm not competing. So he goes and tells him he's not going to compete. And says, you know, thank you, you know, for all you've been doing, but I'm not going to compete. He was like, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> You're going to compete. You're getting in that ring. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Summer. You can't make me do that. I don't know what to do. Hey, 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 hey. Since the moment I met you, I've been making you do things you don't want to do. You know what I'm talking about? You know what? Hey, let's show what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Look, Daniel, we got a bunch of plan here. You know, either you fight one night, one, one fight one night, or you fight every night for the rest of your life. What's it gonna be? <laughs> what are you gonna be? I'm not gonna show up. <laughs> and John Kreese comes out. <laughs> Let's show Mr. Kreese how he's gonna get his business back. <laughs> hey, and like Mike Barnes said, it wasn't personal. He's like, look, you're doing this to yourself, man. <laughs> So, naturally, he's right back in the situation and Miyagi didn't got him back into. So, Miyagi shows up. Starts whooping on them and everything and attacking them in a gym. Miyagi, I mean, he already went out the door. I think he threw the kid in. He should have just went home. and Took Daniel, went home, night over. Nah, he wanted to come in there and attack the doggone military, man. What do you know? <laughs> The big war hero. <laughs> so now he attacks John Kreese and Terry Silver in there in their dojo. He wins the fight because he knows better karate than they do. You think this is the end of it, old man? I'm going to build Cobra Kai dojos all over this valley. Hell, I might even teach for free. <laughs> when it's done, it's going to be John Kreese's karate. You will just be a memory. <laughs> and that would have been the truth. And it is the truth. That's what would have happened. He would have shut Terry Silver had money. He would have shut down that little bonsai tree thing. He would have shut that little thing down, made them bankrupt. They've been in the streets. Look, the film was great. We get to the tournament. Tournament's going well. Everything's in the bag. <laughs> and all of a sudden... <laughs> Daniel LaRusso pulls out this ridiculous kata move, and Mike Barnes, who had this tournament won three different times, but it wasn't really about that. It was about sending a message. And Daniel puts one little flip move on him and pops him in the ribs, and the match was over using kata. And Mike Barnes didn't know what the heck he was doing. And they're sitting there like, get the point. What are you doing? Get the point. <laughs> Every time he got a point, he would lose a point. And he was pounded, Danny. And it was a beautiful thing to watch. I love it when he pounds. This is better than I thought. <laughs> Oh, man, then he screws up the whole tournament and let Daniel LaRusso win the tournament. And they walk off in the sunset. Now, I don't even do that ridiculous, the next Karate Kid one. That's, I don't even do that. So this is the story of Miyagi. Okay.
This is how the real true story of Karate Kid went. Now, now that they got the new saga, they got Kreese back, we gonna keep the focus here. Hope you guys are entertained. Hope you guys now understand the true story of the Karate Kid. The true bad guys are the Mr. Miyagi and Daniel LaRusso, who's been corrupted by Mr. Miyagi. Don't forget to support the page. Donate to your boy, uh, hit the cash app, Carcino for Life, or click the link in the description box. Leave me a message. Tell me what you thought about it in the stream lab. You can leave me big messages there. <laughs> anyway, I'm out. Have a blessed day.